cold brew yerba mate. Yerba mate is a South American herb beloved for its stimulating and health boosting properties. Typically harsh tasting for the uninitiated, it can be tamed with the process of cold brewing for an easier, more refreshing beverage. Hey friends, I'd like to introduce you to something you may not be familiar with, yerba mate. This is a wild herb originally grown in what is known as modern day Paraguay. Like coffee, it's one of the few naturally caffeinated plants found in nature. Yerba mate claims to have a whole bunch of health boosting properties such as various different vitamins and minerals, improving clarity, regulating your blood pressure. As to the truth behind these claims, who can say? So just take it for what you will. The caffeine levels of yerba mate consider it to be somewhere a little bit stronger than black tea, but not quite as strong as coffee. As far as flavor, it's definitely an acquired taste. I didn't really care for it the first few times that I tried it, but eventually it grew on me and I started to love it. The taste is somewhere between like a strong green tea, but with a very pronounced kind of musky, dried grassy kind of flavor. And that may not sound all that appealing, but it's actually pretty good. The traditional way to brew is in a hollow container called a mate. This is usually a dried gourd although it could also be a wooden cup or a cow horn. They are often highly decorated and come in a variety of sizes. The other part you will need is a filtering straw called a bomba or bombisha. The mate is filled with the yerba, the bomba is inserted, and then hot water is added. There isn't much room in there, so the whole thing can be consumed in a few sips. Then you simply add more water and repeat as many times as you like, or until the yerba has lost its potency. The mate would typically be passed around, so after you drink, you would fill it with more water and then hand it off to the next person. This is still the most common way to serve yerba even to this day, although it can also be modernized with the French press. In some cases, sugar is added to the yerba, but the most traditional method is to enjoy it in its original bitter form but using cold water to brew it produces a much smoother, easier to drink version. Even when you brew it using cold water, you can still drink it hot by heating it up, and you'll still find that it's much smoother than if you used hot water from the beginning. There is also a version of iced yerba mate called terere, but that's not what we're making today, perhaps in a future video. To make the cold brew, you'll need some yerba mate, a quart-sized jar, some herbs such as rosemary and bay leaves, and cold water. You can make this as strong as you like. I usually begin with a quarter cup of the yerba, and then maybe after a few weeks, I'll increase it to a third cup, but a quarter cup is a good starting point. After that, I'll add the herbs. These are optional, but it adds a very nice flavor. Then we simply top it up with the water, secure the lid, and give it a gentle shake to combine. Place it off to the side and allow it to sit for eight to 10 hours. I like to do this part right before bed and then come back to it in the morning. It's the next day and you can see the color development from the brewed yerba. It's not the prettiest thing to look at, but we're going to strain it in the next step. Get yourself some drink containers, a mesh sieve, and a French press. There are of course plenty of ways to strain something but I think this method works well and it's very quick. Carefully pour the brewed mate through the sieve directly into the base of the French press. You don't have to worry about emptying everything out of it because we're not done with it yet. I like to use a spoon to transfer the solids back into the jar for a second infusion. Fill it with fresh water again and this time place it aside for a full 24 hours. Since the yerba will be less potent the second time around, a longer steeping time is necessary. Now back to the press. Simply plunge the filter to the bottom and divide the liquid evenly between the beverage containers. At this point, you could also add some sweetener of choice, if you prefer. My containers came up a little short, so I like to top it up with fresh water. These can be stored in the fridge and will remain tasty for a full week. The next day, we'll strain out the second infusion. 
Even though I had longer to sit, you can see it's much lighter in color than the first batch. It will also have a lighter and smoother taste as well, but it's just as good as the first. We will strain it into two new containers, just as before. You can see the differences between the two batches when you place them side by side. Since I'm using recycled beverage containers, I like to also color coordinate using the different colored caps to distinguish one batch from the other. The ones with the black caps is the first brew. I like to drink it hot to get me going first thing in the morning. The ones with the white caps is the lighter brew. I like to drink this cold and sweetened as an afternoon pick-me-up. So from the original scoop of Yerba Mate, you can make four bottles of finished cold brew. You can keep them separated as stronger and lighter, or mix it all together so the four are the same strength. For me, four bottles means four days worth. I have half a bottle of the strong one in the morning and half a bottle of the lighter one in the afternoon. So I can last four days before I need to begin the process again. If you need more caffeine throughout the day, you can drink a full bottle per serving and then repeat the process more often, or you could use more mate when you're brewing it at the beginning. So that's my process for making cold brewed yerba mate. If you're interested in trying, go ahead and let me know in the comments how it turned out. And since mate has always been a drink for sharing, go ahead and share this video with someone you think might enjoy it. Thanks for watching.